After a week filled with record high closings, the market slipped a little bit to start this week of trading. Here are the closing numbers now. The Dow falls 22 points to close at 21,184. The Nasdaq dropped 10 points to finish at 62.95. And the S&P 500 was down nearly three points to end at 24.36. Market analysis, tonight, Jim Lowell is Chief Investment Officer at Advisor Investments and editor of FidelityInvestor.com. Hi, Jim. Hey, Mike. So markets were off a little bit, mostly flat, flat today. What were investors paying attention to today? Well, we just come off of a round of some very heavy, meaningful market-moving economic reports, and this week is going to be all about lighter fare. <clears throat> the market understands that in a week where there really are very few reports, uh, it's going to be event-driven news that moves it. But today we did get a couple of reports that the market was able to focus on pretty early on from the service sector in particular that helped continue to pave that road for an economy that is clearly still on a growth road, not a, not a recession road. All right. What was in those reports? We had services, factory orders, anything in particular that struck your eye? The two service sector reports cover uh, the jobs that basically account for 90 percent of our workforce. And what we saw in there was basic optimism for the economy, both near term and over the intermediate term. Reasonably good numbers in terms of the hiring components of each report. Factory orders a little bit weak, but still at elevated levels, reflective of an economy whose consumer is clearly willing, able, and continues to buy uh, goods and services across most industries boards. All right. Uh, we did have two international uh, incidents, obviously, the terror attack in London. There was also the isolation of the nation of Qatar in the Arab world by a handful of other countries. Did either of those uh, play in the markets today? They really didn't. <clears throat> you know, the uh, terrorist attack, uh, while obviously tragic on a human scale, is something that we've seen the market uh, be very cold and calculating uh, about in terms of uh, discounting, dismissing it. I did just that, not just in uh, our domestic markets here, but in the European bourses and also in the Asian markets as well. And then uh, segmenting out Qatar from the OPEC nations uh, and by removing a diplomatic uh, by removing the diplomatic ties between those nations. One might have thought that the oil market would have been roiled by that news, but Qatar is a, is a very low producer of crude oil. It has the biggest natural gas reserves of the OPEC member nations, but not crude oil. So the oil market was absolutely nonplussed by the news. That said, uh, Qatar's own stock market was down over 7% on that news. So uh, it might be impactful for that region, but for the global markets, again, uh, they discounted it and moved on. All right, we do, do have two things still to come this week that I think we're going to be paying a lot of attention to. Uh, number one, the British election, and then number two, uh, James Comey testifying in this country later on in the week. That's right, uh, and they come uh, on the 8th and then the 9th, so Wednesday and Thursday. We begin with the U.K. Uh, vote, which wasn't scheduled uh, to take place until 2020, but Prime Minister May bumped it way up in order to shore up uh, her Brexit position. Uh, polls suggest that she's likely to be able to do just that, shore up support for it. But if there's uh, an uncertain and unexpected outcome, markets clearly will react to that. And then the same thing can be said about uh, the ex-director of the FBI, James Comey. If his testimony really does in any way, shape, or form uh, protract the concern that this is an administration that may have done something uh, wrong with regards to Russia, or that the president may have done something wrong with regards to obstruction of justice, the markets would definitely not take that as good news. All right, so that's Wednesday and Thursday. Tomorrow, Jim, anything in particular? No, we really go into a very light reporting week, Mike, and that, uh, as you said and as I said, means that this market's going to be squarely focused on the things that are least important from an investment perspective, and that's the day-to-day event-driven news. Jim Lowell of Advisor Investments. Jim, thanks for being here. Thanks, Mike. And one more note on the markets now. Stock in Google's parent company, Alphabet, topped today $1,000 per share for the first time and finished above $1,000. This less than a week after Amazon reached that same milestone. These companies are part of a small group that have shunned stock splits. Those splits make the stock more affordable and generate brokerage fees. But Alphabet and Amazon have chosen to reward long-term investors.